Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Operation Arsenal. We've just beaten Sheffield United 3-0. Incredible result against a team that's pretty much already gone. Um, <laughs> I know it's it's easy to say, oh, it's only Sheffield United, but you can only beat who's in front of you, and we've done a really good job today. So, quickly, round of applause for the Arsenal squad. We actually managed to get a result, which uh, I'm pretty happy about. To be fair, when I saw the lineup. We didn't realise Xhaka was playing left back until the game pretty much kicked off, which, by the way, he did OK. I know it's a bit more of a fluid formation. It's not just he's sitting at left back. When we're in possession, he moved in a little bit. When we're out of possession, he moved out wide a little bit. He had Ceballos basically moving over to the left side and that let Martinelli get forward. It, it wasn't just a static left back role for Xhaka, but the lineup was a bit confusing. And I was thinking to myself, Do you know what, this, this has just got one of those... Arsenal results written all over it. But thankfully, do you know what? We actually played some great football at times in this game. But yeah, you've always got to remember we're playing against the worst side in the league this season. They've won four games. I mean, if we came away with a loss today, that would have been really embarrassing. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy with the, the way we played. Like I said, in certain times of the game, in certain periods, we were really really quite impressive some of the play some of the interchanging the triangles the one twos I thought Pepe Saka and Martinelli were all fantastic rotating around with Lacazette getting two goals Martinelli with a tap in as well so happy that he got a start that is all I wanted to see when the lineups came out I was live I was streaming I said I just want one thing one thing Gabby to start on that left side and do you know what he was brilliant I don't see how Aubameyang plays on Thursday if he recovers. Of course, he's out with the flu at the moment. I really hope that's not COVID. They haven't said it's COVID. I, I guess it's probably not. Otherwise, they would have said something by now. But that's the worry, isn't it? When a club says he's out with flu. Um, but yeah, let's 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 see what happens on Thursday with Martinelli. I, I truly believe and hope that he will start on Thursday because he deserves it. But with Arteta sometimes... He goes off some other aspects of their games. I, I guess it's more of a, if Aubameyang's fit, do I just go with Aubameyang? He's the captain. I guess that's what Arteta thinks. But I, I think Gabriel was really good today. He did pick up a slight knock, which was a bit worrying. Um, he came off the pitch, went back on. He seemed a little bit uh, slower for a few minutes, a little bit tender, but he seemed to run it off and then he scored. So that's good news. However, Saka did come off with an injury. It seems to be... Either a bit of a dead leg or a slight thigh problem. Hopefully nothing serious. He needs to play on Thursday as well. Um, but yeah, in general, really happy with the attacking side of the team today. Defensively, I mean, it's a clean sheet. Oh my God, we just got a clean sheet. Unbelievable. Well done, Pablo Mari as well. I, Him or Gabriel. That is so difficult. With Mari, you get, I would say, a more sophisticated, neater, more professional centre-back performance. But with Gabriel, you get that aggression, tenacity, a bit more pace, a bit more mobi mobility. And I don't know, he's, he's a bit more of a brute, isn't he? Um, so it's good that we've got a mix. I just don't know who I'd go with. I, I, I like Mari. I do. Like I said, he's a bit more neat and tidy, isn't he? But Gabriel... There's something about him. And of course, the first kind of three, four months of his career at Arsenal were incredible. He got uh, player of the month three months in a row, wasn't it? Really, really quite good. And then, of course, he got COVID and he hasn't really returned to that form. But um, yeah, Mari, I I've got to give a big shout to him. He was brilliant next to holding today. Callum Chambers at right back. And then, of course, Granite Xhaka at left back. Granite did well. I like I said, he wasn't literally a left back. He, he played there when he needed to today, but otherwise he would rotate into midfield and he would cover spaces and he was actually really quite comfortable. And then Leno in goal didn't have too much to do. And ultimately it's a 3-0 win. There isn't really much to talk about regarding the game. A uh, quick word on Sheffield United, because of course they have changed manager, which I think is very, very harsh. Um, yeah, I, I didn't really agree with that decision. But do you know what? Um, they are probably gone. It's done. I think it's not mathematically done yet, but they're, they're going to be in the championship next season. And I would like to see them bounce back. Last season, they were brilliant. You know, at one point they were in the top six and everyone was saying, you know, this is incredible. 
when has a, a team got promoted from the championship and dominated so much? And they were great last season, but second season syndrome, players st stepped off the pedal a little bit, uh, got a bit comfortable. And do you know what? Maybe this is what they kind of need to get that fight back. I, I don't know, though. It's going to be a tough one. Are they going to be able to bounce back? Let me know in the comments. Um, and while you're down there in the comments, check out the description box for a link to my Facebook. And also, I've been streaming my watchlongs on Twitch because it's non-gaming content. I can stream that anywhere. But if you want to watch me play games and stuff, then Facebook is the platform. So let's go ahead and show you something I've been working on. Let me just get the right scene. There we go. Ooh, fancy transition. So this is something I was working on during the stream. See, this is what you're missing out on if you don't watch the stream. It isn't finished. I haven't completely decided that I'm happy with it. But what you've got in the bottom right corner is next year's lineup, in my opinion. I know, really neat handwriting with my mouse. Leno in goal with a new right back. Saliba comes back next to Gabriel or Mari. Haven't decided yet. Tierney at left centre-back. And actually, that reminds me. I want to go ahead and make this very clear. Next season, I want to see this. Captain Tierney. Maybe. I don't know. Partey in midfield with a new central midfielder. I think that's unlikely. So I think it's it's probably going to be Xhaka playing in that position there. But I would like to think we can bring in a new central midfielder. But it depends on this. Can we sign Erdegaard permanently? If not, then of course we'll, we'll, we'll go with a central midfielder potentially and we'll have Smith Rowe here. But then I'd go with Saka on the right, Erdegaard in the middle, Martinelli on the left and Aubameyang. Pepe? Where does Pepe go? Maybe ahead of Martinelli? I don't know. Mar Martinelli was great today. And I think if we really want to keep him, we really want him to become that incredible player we know he's capable of, then I would like him to start most games. Otherwise, he's going to want to go. Um, in terms of selling players, which we've got on this panel here, um, Runarsson, again, this isn't finished. I don't know if he deserves to be sold, but he wasn't great. Uh, David Luiz, I would set to release and maybe offer him some sort of coaching role. I think that'd be great to keep him in and around the changing room. I think he could offer a lot there. Uh, Bellerin, I would sell. Kolasinac, I mean, he's going to come back from his loan because um, Schalke are going to get relegated. They won today, though, by the way. Uh, Chambers, see, look, this is, this is tough. I kind of feel like I'm on the fence a little bit of Chambers because he has been great lately. Um... For me, it's between him and Holding. We, we probably will need to sell one of them at some point. So I don't know about Holding. So this is why I'm saying this is not finished. Uh, Torreira has openly said he doesn't want to play for Arsenal again. He doesn't want to live in England. He's not happy at Atletico Madrid. He wants to play for Boca. Uh, he's currently in Uruguay with his family right now. He unfortunately lost his mother to COVID, which is horrendous. Rest in peace, Torreira's mother. Um, he's not going to play for Arsenal again. So I would sell. Apparently 20 million will be enough. Uh, Ceballos, I would not buy permanently from Real Madrid. I think he'll go back. He was decent today, though. Genduzi, Oh, man, this is a tough one because Genduzi has the potential to be a great player. But attitude issues, thinks he's better than most other players. I earn more money than you, that kind of thing. Um, that worries me. So, again, not 100% sure on Genduzi, But I would sell Willian. I think that was... It was an interesting idea, an interesting concept to bring in someone experienced in a position that we're a bit weak in. But with Martinelli, Saka having such a breakthrough season, Nelson still struggling to get in, Pepe doesn't get enough time. I would just sell him, even if it's for five, ten million, something like that. And then I'd get rid of Enketia because, of course, Balogun down here is going to get a new contract, apparently. So everyone you see here is a player that I would keep. Some of them have been on loan, like Saliba and Mavropanos. I'd keep them. I think we need to promote a goalkeeper from the Youth Academy. Someone that can be our third choice. I think Renarsson would then be sold. A new right back, and I mean a starting right back. A new left back, but a backup left back because obviously Tierney is good enough to play. Um, a new central midfielder or an attacking midfielder. It all depends on this guy. Is Erdegaard going to come back to Arsenal? I think he will, even if it's on loan. And then a new left winger, potentially. Um... You might think I'm mad because I just said to sold, sell Willian. Um, but the reason I would like a new left winger is because Nelson should go out on loan. I think we should be loaning him out. Um, and we don't really have a natural left winger other than Martinelli. You know, Pepe and Saka are both right-sided. So that leaves Willian and Nelson. Sell Willian, loan out Nelson and bring in a new left winger. 
Um, that's kind of where I'm at with this. Let me know what you would change in the comments. Like I said, this is not finished. I haven't decided 100%, but this is the kind of stuff I do every year. And I thought because this game was so boring today, a bit dry, other than three goals, which is great, it wasn't much going on. Um, I thought I'd show you, but um, if I go back to the other scene, fancy transition again, my man of the match goes to Lacazette. Two goals from him. I thought Martinelli was really good, but also I would have been tempted to give it to Granit Xhaka or Ceballos. I thought they were both really good. Um, it's funny, no Aubameyang, no problem. But against Sheffield, I don't, it, it depends what happens on Thursday, whether or not I'm going to be happy. Um, there's every chance that we're going to lose, you know, and get knocked out of the only chance for a European spot next season, which would be an absolute travesty. But thank you so much for watching, guys. Another Operation Arsenal done. Uh, thank you to everyone who watched the stream. And I will see you guys on Thursday for the Slavia Prague second leg. Oh, God, I'm dreading that.